folks, it's Emma over at Retro Dodo and today I'm going to show you how to win Mission 9 in Advance Wars Reboot Camp. Olaf's back, which is quite a nice change after Grit's annoying sniper tag. You know, I like Grit, but it can really hit hard. Mission 9 isn't that easy and it's not because the battle itself is tough. You've got more than enough units to take out every single enemy unit if that was the mission but the actual mission is to capture 12 cities which includes the bases that are neutral as well problem is you start out with only three cities whilst blue moon starts out with six so you're already at a disadvantage and the problem is thanks to where their infantry is mainly positioned it's so easy for them to get up to 12. The amount of times I tried to do this mission and kept failing is incredibly embarrassing, which I feel is a recurring theme with these guides. So what I would suggest is, yes, you want to move your infantry up from Orange Star HQ to start capturing those neutral cities, but you also want to send some infantry or mechs across the mountains and rivers that are to the right of the Orange Star HQ. Now, yes, there are bridges, but they're gonna become heavily congested very quickly. And once you've got a tank, even at the start of the bridge rather than the end, you can't get past them. And obviously infantry mechs have the beauty of being able to cross mountains and rivers, whereas tanks can't. So use that to your advantage and start moving into Blue Moon territory. Your other priority with this mission, besides the obvious of capturing as many cities as possible, is to get that neutral base on your half of the map as quickly as possible. So as you can see, from Orange Star HQ, I went up and took the first two neutral cities and then immediately sent my infantry over to the neutral base to capture it. This is good because one, your infantry is now in the correct vicinity to start capturing the other neutral cities, but also it means you can start churning out more ground units to tackle the oncoming wall of blue moon units that are coming at you because they too have some bases and they keep churning out units as well. However, at the same time, you'll also notice that I've sent some of my foot soldiers across the bridge that's in the middle of the battle map. And one of my units has started to successfully capture one of the enemy cities. To offer a little bit of protection, I've sent a medium tank on ahead, just because you've got artillery, you've got normal tanks, you've got jeeps, you've got a lot of people descending on that area to try and claw back that one city. At the same time, I've also got another mech coming up across that exact same bridge to bolster the protection because of my one unit being so vulnerable. But also, if that unit should then fall, I've got a replacement. And if it's successful and doesn't fall, I've got another unit across in Blue Moon territory that can start heading towards another enemy city. It really comes down to a very fine line between defeat and victory in this battle. At least it did for me, but I have a feeling it will for a lot of people. Mainly because, like I said, you start off at a disadvantage and no matter how much you seem to progress in this battle map, it always feels like Blue Moon is one step ahead of you. So as you can see, I'm coming up to the very end of this mission and me and Blue Moon are neck and neck. We've both got 10 cities each. This is why I'm really really trying to keep hold of that one enemy city I took back directly across the bridge that's in the middle of the map and then at the same time I'm trying to take out the tank that's around the other bridge so towards the top of the map while securing two more neutral cities. It proves quite tricky because the moment the map and Blue Moon starts to suss out that you're close to victory all the units kind of descend in your direction. However, you will get it done. The main thing as well is, yes, the tanks are great to take out, but you really want to aim for taking out the enemy infantry when you get into this stage of the game, simply because if any of them survive, they can capture your cities. Whereas if they're not there, it doesn't matter how many enemy tanks are available, they can't capture anything. By the same logic though, if you've got no infantry left, you can't capture any of theirs either. So with that in mind, always be using your funds that you're gathering from the cities you've captured to use those bases and bring out more ground units if and when needed. Blizzard battle is frustrating, challenging, but at the same time really fun and it's so satisfying when you nail it, finally win mission 9 and defeat Olaf. It's just such a really great victory 
I think because you have to be so, so clever about this and you can't just go guns blazing and just try and take out all the enemies. And there's not necessarily a bait or a HQ that you have to capture. It's about just knowing how to control the battlefield. So that is the beauty of this mission when compared with others. But at the same time, it's also the biggest bind of this mission because you've got no get out of jail free card. But we've done it. We've done mission nine and I'd say mission 10, although tricky, is a lot easier than this in the sense of you can be a bit more forceful with your plan of attack. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, so for now let's bask in the glory of victory and I will see you in the next guide.